and welcome to Figments in Time podcast. I'm Lewis. I'm Val. And we're here to share the magic with you. Tonight's episode is going to be called uh, maybe a little scary. We have a little not so scary discussion to hold. Yes. We have a couple of segments planned. We're going to talk figment feelings. And we're going to talk about the Orlando Informant Party. Not Disney, but in the same city. I think they're frenemies. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but we'll talk about the you know, Orlando Informer Party. We're going to have some random theme park history facts, all about theme parks, but usually about Walt Disney World, about Liberty Square, which Val conveniently picked randomly last, last week. It was random, I promise. <laughs> the next thing we'll be doing is it was the best of snacks. It was the not so scariest of snacks. We're going to look at the snack possibilities they have at the not so scary party the sweet snacks and we're going to pick our favorites our least favorites and then we're going to vow to buy at least one of each okay when we go yeah no matter how hard it is no matter how long val has to stand in line uh -huh. yeah. we're going to do it and then we'll preview next week and we'll, what's coming up next week and we'll choose next week's random trivia this time actually randomly <laughs> Just kidding. In okay, my so. defense, today's randomness is the same as last week's. It was just I pick the number instead of you. Anyway. All right. So think my feelings. We're going to talk about the Orlando Informer Party. Yes. And this was something that I was introduced to by Steffers, whose Instagram hashtag is Adventures with Steffers. Love and Steffers. Steffers is a sweet brand. It's like one of the greatest theme park parties I've been to. It's it expensive. Really is good. No doubt it's expensive. I think if looking at the upcoming um, parties, which are all still available in December and or in November, one day is two hundred thirty nine fifty four. Two nights. At this point, four hundred and twenty-three dollars for both night. They start out at about three fifty when you initially um, can do two nights. We're doing one night in December coming up. Usually, it sells out. Usually, the two days sell out pretty fast. So, what makes it great? Well, we know we know a ticket to Universal can cost nearly two hundred dollars at times, but it's a party. You get there about five. Most every ride is available. Some close a little early, which is something you, you definitely need to look into before yes. you go to make sure you know what you want to ride and what's closing. But there's food. Uh, most of the food is available. So one of my favorite areas is the Simpsons area where they have all the bays open. And they've got chicken nuggets and burgers and um, pizza. It's good pizza. Love the chicken nuggets too. All around the park, there's there's food. The Cinnabon place was open when I was yeah. there in December. I'll talk about my, my, my December adventure in a minute, but let's, let me let Val tell you what her favorite foods were. I'm not as adventurous as Val was, and Val was with our kids. And let me let me let her share the food experience she had. This was my first experience at an Orlando Informer event. It was only my second time in Universal Studios for Islands of Adventure. I'd only ever been one other day um, uh, several months ago. So I, this was my very first experience. We decided to have dinner at the Leaky Cauldron, which was in Diagon Alley in the Harry Potter area. And we just had the best dinner. It was shepherd's pie and some salad and some different things. And it was so good. And then afterwards, we picked up some ice cream at the ice cream shop there in Diagon Alley. And I had the best Earl Grey lavender ice cream in the world. I am still dreaming about this ice cream. It was so incredible. And uh, then after we did some things at Universal Orlando, we or Universal Studios. I'm still learning the names. See, I'm so very new to Universal. But after we took the train over to Hogwarts in that area, we went to Three Broomsticks and picked up some fish and chips and this apple pie that was just 
amazing. And a few other little things that we tried there, they had large containers of fruits. There were vegetables. I mean, there was just so much to choose from. And the kids did get some other things too. They got some churros, they got some popcorn. They picked up, you know, some other little snacks along the, the way in, during the night. But those two meals, and, and, it, and you, you don't pay extra for that food. You just walk in and they just, you just pick up big plates of it and eat. It's so many churros. Pumpkin juice, beer, uh, butter beer and pumpkin juice was just like available. Like you could like pick you up, up like cups of water. You just walk by, pick it up, drink it, move on. It was amazing. What do you think of butter beer? You like it? I like it. I I am hot, cold or frozen. What do you What are your? I doing? have not tried it hot yet. I've only tried it cold. I thought it was really good. I am not a huge person to drink a lot of flavored things or a lot of really sweet sweet things. So I, I just took a few sips of it. I, I didn't. I, you know, I didn't drink it all night. Like I think our son-in-law drank. <laughs> like five or six cups of better beer. But uh, I, for me, I, I, it was just, it was fun to taste it. I think I like the pumpkin juice better than I like the better beer, but that's just because of me. And I think I would like it hot. It was just so hot when we were there. I just couldn't stand the thought of trying something hot that night. So. So I've done the party two times before once, I think the past two Decembers actually was when I, when I did it. And the first time it was amazing. I, w I was able to ride every ride in the park that wasn't a roller coaster because I can't actually fit on the roller coasters, which is why I don't go to Universal more and why these, these just going for four or five hours is, is perfection. Um, and I was hooked. And it, it's just fantastic. There's nobody else in the park. I just go to, I went around, I went both sides of the park, both parks were at everything. Fantastic. Last year in December, I had come back from a trip in the UK and we flew home after a week in the UK. I got in bed, went to bed one night, got back in the car, drove to Disney World or to Universal. The next night I was at the Universal theme park party and I was about asleep just in the park. It was it was the worst thing I've done. The party was good. The party was really good. And that's where I discovered the, the cinnamon <laughs> place was open. They were just like, take some Cinnabons. Take, take some, take some. Like, please don't give me any more Cinnabons. I'll just sit here all night. Well, and see, and I <clears> didn't <throat> even attend the party with Lewis because we had decided that was the day of that first party that he went to in this past December was the one day I've ever been to a Universal Park. We got a one day ticket for me just to check it out because I'd never been. And, and the reason why I had never been is because most of you know, if you've followed this for very long, I have positional vertigo. So I can't flip upside down and I can't spin. Like I can't ride the teacups. I can't ride rock and roller coaster for Disney reference. And we just always felt like I didn't think there was going to be enough that I could do at Universal to make it worth it. And so we just decided to do the one day ticket for me just to check it out, to see it, just so I could see it. And because we have been watching the Harry Potter movies this year, and so I wanted to see the world of Harry Potter. And so we just thought, well, one day would be plenty for me to do that. And I wasn't super impressed that first day. I wasn't feeling well either on that particular day. And so I, I thought the Harry Potter areas were amazing, but they were so crowded that I could not see hardly anything. I couldn't get into the stores. I had a hard time walking through the streets. I didn't, we ate at the Leaky Cauldron, but we just really didn't do a whole lot because we just couldn't. It was so busy that day that we were there. And so I went back to the resort when he went to the Orlando Informer event that night and I didn't even go. I would not have probably ever gone back on my own um, had it not been for the fact that we were with the kids. Obviously, Lewis wasn't able to go on that trip. Um, so I was with the kids and I didn't. And I had to cancel my seat to the, for, to the party. He did. Which I was because, able to push to the next one. That's why we're going again in December. Right. Long story. He didn't get to go. I, <laughs> I went with the kids. I didn't want to miss the time with the kids. I thought, well, I still want to see and have dinner with them and do things. So I, I, I had the ticket for the event 
and I could not believe how much fun we had. I rode so many attractions with them. There were only a very few attractions, you know, obviously, like I said, I can't flip upside down, but it, it, the crowds were so small. We got to see every shop in Diagon Alley, every area in the Hogwarts area. We, we like I said, we had the meals that we had. We, we got to shop. I got my wand. We did all of these things. And, um, and they got to ride the thrill rides that they were able to ride. And I was able to ride Green Guts, which I didn't know if I could, but I decided to ride it. And it was amazing. And I was able to do it and didn't make me dizzy at all. And so it turned out to be just one of the most fun nights. So that was why when I came home, I told Lewis, I was like, you've got to get me a ticket for December because I want to go back again and do it again. I want to, to spend even more time in Diagon Alley and because we were trying to hurry to do everything. But I will say, I, I read a blog article about my experience with the Orlando um, Informer event. So if you want more information, there's more information in the blog post. But one of the things that I said was that you do need to plan your night. We just went in blind thinking we've got all of this time. You know, Lewis said you could ride things multiple times. We didn't think about it. And we were so excited in... Diagon Alley that we stayed so long because we were playing with the wands because we went to Ollivander's and picked out my wand. The girls helped me choose one. And then we did all the things. And so we didn't get on the train to go over until almost 10 o'clock, not knowing that Hagrid's and the Hulk and some others that I don't remember now off the top of my head have to close at 11 because of sound ordinances and because their lines were so long, because they were closing at 11, the lines had not been long as we had been checking them throughout the night. But I guess everyone was thinking, oh, it's closing at 11, so we have to hurry and get on it. And so that made the line long. So they actually ended up closing off the line at 10 so they could get everybody through by 11. So the kids didn't get to, I didn't get to ride Hagrid's. The kids didn't get to ride Hulk and a couple other things. So that was, that was our mistake, was not planning the evening. You get quite a quite a good amount of time. You can usually get there. Well, okay, I'm looking at the December times, the November times. If you can get there at five o'clock, and you haven't from five until I think the party the, the park closes at eight. Uh, oh no, seven. The park closes at seven on Friday, and the park closes at eight on Saturday. And then you have from seven at, seven p.m. on to twelve thirty a.m. on Friday, or 8 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And you can roam the park. If you've ever been to a, a corporate party where they've closed off a theme park, it's just like that. It's just the same feeling. The food's free. All the non-alcoholic liquids are free. It's that that's available. It's just fantastic. It, it really, really was a great night. And I hope that we'll spend some more time uh, another episode later talking a little bit more about the event and, and the experience that I had because it was just so positive and, and we enjoyed it so much. And the kids had a great night. So if you want to know more about that, go to Orlin, OrlandoInformer.com and check it out. Look for their party, their um, Orlando Informer events. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you there in December if, you, if you're there. Yeah. We're at early, early December. So. All right, next up, we're going to move into random theme park history facts. All about, the, about all theme parks, but usually about Walt Disney World. Yes. And this week, again, it is about Walt Disney World. She's going to tell us a little more about Liberty Square. Yes. As I mentioned in our last episode, I have a book that I really, really like a lot. And the information on it, it will be in the notes, but it's The Hidden Magic of Walt Disney World. And it's written by Susan Vaness. And I love Disney trivia. I love Disney history. And so I really like that book a lot. So um, I was needing to go ahead and prep and we had not started using the randomizer to, to figure out. So I just picked a random number in my head. I just said 60 and I opened up the book and it opened up to Liberty Square. 
And so, yes, my favorite attraction is in Liberty Square. So that was I, I, that was just a little surprise. But I, I promise that it wasn't on purpose. Um, but Liberty Square is an area in the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. When you are looking at the castle and you're walking through the hub, you will go to your left and you're going to see a bridge that goes over some water that's around the moat for the castle. And um, the idea that the Imagineers had was that as you are crossing the bridge, you are crossing the ocean and you are heading into the east coast of the United States um, and coming into colonial America. The other entrance into Liberty Square is from Fantasyland, Peter Pan's Flight. As you pass Peter Pan's Flight, you cross in um, under a bridge that you feel like you're coming in underneath a bridge. And that is coming into Liberty Square. And again, it's like coming from London into Colonial America. The first thing that you'll see as you're coming in, obviously, is the Haunted Mansion. And I'm not going to go into any of the history or the hidden Mickeys in the Haunted Mansion for this because that will discussion. likely be the random pick for next week. <laughs> it will probably, it might be, but it probably <laughs> won't be. But I want to do a whole thing on just the Haunted Mansion because I love the Haunted Mansion and I have a whole nother book for that. But um, but I do want to talk for just a minute about Columbia Harbor House. It's a counter service restaurant on the left as you come in from Peter Pan's flight. It is a seafood restaurant. It is one of my favorite quick services just because of the options that it does have. And because I don't love the quick service food at Magic Kingdom. That's a whole nother episode discussion too. But I do love Columbia Harbor House. And the thing that's really neat about it is that each section of the dining room is actually dedicated to a ghost ship or a ship lost at sea. And it's kind of cool because you're in an area talking about a ghost ship and you're looking across the windows, you're going to see the haunted mansion from that view. And so I think that that's incredibly cool. But one of the things that you'll notice in one of those windows is that there are two lanterns hung and that's to represent the two lanterns that Paul Revere hung in uh, Boston's Christ church steeple when the British soldiers were coming in by sea and he was warning everybody one if by land, two if by sea. So you can see the two lanterns hanging in the windows there. So also there are 13 lanterns in a tree that's in the center of Liberty Square that those and those 13 lanterns stand for the 13 original colonies. And they are in a tree that is to represent the Liberty tree. And it's a over 100 year old oak tree that was found on the property when they were building Walt Disney World and they transplanted it into Liberty Square so that it could stand for the Liberty tree. And then near that is also the Liberty Bell. And there's a ton of urban legends about the Liberty Bell. A lot of people say it was, you know, it's it was the second one that was cast. A lot of people will say that it was one of the ones that was cast in 1976 when we were celebrating the bicentennial. But actually, it is a mold that was made from the Liberty Bell in 1989. And there weren't just two of those made. There were many of the Liberty Bell cast that were actually made during that time, but it was given to Walt Disney world to be able to display in Liberty square. Didn't we find one of those in your uh, mom's garage? when we were? It's actually, I still have, it. it was one of the things I saved as we moved mom. Um, it, I, I don't know where I got it, but I've had it ever since I was a kid. It's a little copy of the Liberty Bell and it's a, a coin bank. So it's like this big, but it's the Liberty Bell. But anyway, um, there is another urban legend that I still don't know if it's an urban legend or not. But when you walk into Liberty Square and you look down on the ground, the pavement is a different color. And when we did the keys or when I did the keys to the kingdom tour, our tour guide, our plaid person, VIP person, actually told us specifically that the reason why there is a brown section that looks like a little river that runs through Liberty Square is that it's supposed to be a representation of the fact that they did not have plumbing during this time period. And people would typically throw things out their windows onto the street and they would flow down the road. And so that was actually told to us during a Keys to the Kingdom tour. 
I have heard it mentioned so many times on sites and on social media and in books that say that that's an urban legend and it's not true, um, which is very possible because that VIP person could have just been quoting a legend, but it did come from the official tour guide at Disney to us when we were doing the keys to the kingdom tour. Um, I believe it was the keys to the kingdom tour that that was on. I've done several tours, but um, so I don't know for sure if it's an urban legend, even though everybody says that it is. So it might be, or it might not be. Yeah. I think I've seen that, that not just by the legend. I was thinking at the very least, um, Hal Bowers, who's go away green on Twitter. I'm 95% sure he verified that as yeah. a truth. Yeah. Because of course by saying it 95%, I'm just as bad as anybody else, I suppose. But I long. typically, <laughs> if, if I heard it on a tour, like the keys to the kingdom tour or the four park tour or, or the Christmas, you know, I've, I've done so many of those. And if I hear it from the tour, I usually take that as being pretty much truth and not, not just stories. Yeah. Um, now I will say when we did the keys to the kingdom tour and they told us a lot of trivia from the haunted mansion, I think some of that was urban legend, but you just kind of never know for sure. So I've seen it both ways, but I I've always taken that to be truth. I, I have never taken that as to be an urban legend about why the, the color change on the, the, the bricks there was important. So, um, but anyway, there are a lot of really cool things in Liberty square. Um, if you're looking for a great snack or a great meal, sleepy hollow has the waffles that have the hot chicken or the Nutella with the fruit. So that's a great place to grab a snack. Um, there is the Hall of Presidents to enjoy. As Lewis says, it's a great place to nap. It's nice and cool. <laughs> but I enjoy the Hall of Presidents presentation because I love history. So I enjoyed that. There's obviously the Haunted Mansion. Memento Mori is one of the very few gift shops that's still unique. So it is a terrific gift shop to visit, especially if you're a Haunted Mansion fan like I am. The other attraction that is incredibly cool is the Liberty Bell River Boat. And we've done that several times. You can get some really unique pictures on that attraction. You can see a side to the Haunted Mansion that you don't normally get to see, but you also just have some beautiful views going down the river. The Liberty Bell River Boat was originally called the Richard F. Irvine because there are a lot, if you know, like Joe Fowler, there's all the, the boats are typically named for Imagineers, for people that worked at Walt Disney World. But um, this one was renamed to the Liberty Bell River Boat after they did a refurbishment in 1996 because they basically rebuilt the whole ship or the whole boat. I don't, I'm not very good with nautical terms, so I don't know exactly I what this you call it. Boat. It is a river boat. So they, they pretty much replaced almost every piece of it. So they renamed it to the Liberty Bell at that point in 1996. So there are just a lot of really cool attractions in Liberty Square. There's great places to eat. Uh, Liberty Tree Tavern, if you like the family style meals where you get like the turkey and the chicken and the roast beef with the mashed potatoes and the vegetables and the salad and the dessert, and it's all brought to your table family style. Um, it's a great place to eat as well. And if you don't like that, you're confusing me. <laughs> or you're vegetarian, I suppose. I can, I'll give you. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot to see in Liberty Square. If you haven't had a chance to spend much time there, you need to check it out. It's really cool. All right. So next we are going to do, it was the best of snacks. It was the not so scary of snacks. <laughs> and we're going to go through the list of snacks. So we're going to pick out the thing we go. Yeah, that's, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> and we're going to eat that. <laughs> We're going to pick out what we really want to eat and make sure we get a little of that. I'll, I'll say the not so scary party snacks. I was, I was burned hard on one and I chose never to take time in line for another one again. So doing this is a big deal. One year they had a wedding cake with a hatchet in it for Constance for the bride that's in the haunted mansion and the cake looked amazing. And I waited in line for it. I got it and it was super dry. It was not good. I was so disappointed. And so after that, I was like, oh, I wasted not so scary party time for something that was so terrible. But I will say, looking at these snacks, they look so great. Okay, let me share this so we can hit, sit here and discuss it. 
We're going to talk about the foods. We've pulled up the Disney Parks Foodie Guide to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party 2023. If you want to also follow along or look at these yourself and have your own little discussion about what's good. So they have at Anti Gravity's Galactic mm -hmm. Goodies, they have an apple fritter milkshake. And it does look good. Honestly, it's a brown milkshake with whip, green whipped cream on top. Mm -hmm. With an apple fritter stuck out of it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's that can't be bad, right? No. Mm -hmm. well, it could be bad, I suppose. But um, And then they have a mummy treat that's spiky pastry filled with hazelnut topped with icing and sugar eyes. And it looks incredibly cute, but I am not a huge hazelnut fan. So it, it doesn't they sound do as good to me. But it does I look think that really may cute. be the cutest of the... Mm -hmm. snacks i've seen and pictures of the thing that on that this first list that looks incredibly good to me is the queen of hearts slushy the frozen cherry slushy that has the black cherry puree and it's topped with whipped cream and a little crown that one is looking really good to me i'm very much hoping we don't choose that one because i hate cherry but still the witch's cold we... brew is something you would like more than i would because i am not a coffee drinker so I only like hot or frozen coffee and frozen coffee being more like a, a frozen cappuccino from the Joffrey stand. So this one does not excite me at all. And we're going to skip over the, we're not going to choose um, the savory snacks because we're, we're going right. to, we're going to probably eat some of these for dinner if they're available at whatever restaurant we make it to. Right. And there's some good looking things here with a, a, a a terrifying twice spiced chicken sandwich, which looks like a chicken breast with hot honey, pepper jack cheese, jalapeno peppers, and bacon. You, know, now, you put bacon I'm, on anything. I'm feeling like that we may go to Cosmic Rays that night because that looks really tasty. Not so much the snarling sub, the meatball sub with the spicy marinara. I'm not a big meatball sub person. I don't know. That looks pretty good too. The pearl mozzarella teeth. Pearl mozzarella teeth. Let's still try. Mozzarella. Yeah. I like the, it's like food you try to get a kid to eat. Come on, you, you can eat it. They're teeth. <laughs> They're what? Are you kidding me? Zombie, zombie fingers teeth. is, I would say, probably the second cutest thing on this I've seen so far. Yeah. They're almond cookies, green almond cookies, a key lime pie, white chocolate. They get little eyes and the, the mm -hmm. almond cookie fingers look like fingers and they look like they have little almond nails fingernails yeah it, they're really cute but I, yeah, again i i don't know i'm it, it might be really good the river mm. sticks elixir is kiwi lemonade with luster dust so that just looks very it, i mean it's very basic but um it has a very cool look to it what is luster dust it is another one of those lewis and i have been watching a lot of baking shows due to the dearth of <laughs> programming this season we have just been like looking for things that we can watch you know when we're having dinner that kind of thing Look, and if you can bake a, a cake that looks like a baseball mitt <laughs> i'm gonna probably watch it that's that's <laughs> just the thing i really want to taste it too because the judge is going it's so good and so he should know what luster dust is because we watched all these episodes of them using things to make snacks and treats with they use a lot of weird terms Oh, they, they, they have um, Pain and Panic Bratwurst, which is a, a bratwurst with sriracha. Um, this is the Friar's Nook. Yes. Um, and then Pain and Panic Loaded Tots, which are tots topped with sweet and spicy onion relish, sriracha, mustard, and crumbled bratwurst. So again, I don't know. And then the buffalo hand, the buffalo chicken hand pie. I feel like those are our meals as well. I don't know that we're going to try those. Because they, all three of those seem to be meal-ish. If you hear me smacking my lips, it's not the normal <laughs> version of that. This, if I'm picking a meal, this is the place. If I get to choose the place where we eat this night, we're going. We'll be there with friends. Dillo's Diz meetup is that weekend. They're available. It's not. It's not private. So, yes, for the party on September the eighth, you can join us. Um, say hello. Well, Dillo's Diz and a couple of other people, a couple of other followers would be there. Yeah. This looks good. I said, we're not, we're not doing, we're not doing, we're only doing sweet snacks for our best and worst, but 
in terms of a meal, yeah, the bratwurst and those yeah. tots together mm-hmm. would be a tummy twisting good time. You you can go for that. I, I, Sweet. I, I, I don't know. Don't Sriracha know. mustard. Oh man. Now Beef at the golden at go the golden oak outpost, they have a couple of things that look really good. They have a tombstone tart, which is a flaky pastry filled with strawberry jalapeno jam, which I do love a good sweet and spicy jam topped with sprinkles and sugar spiders. So that sounds really good. But I do love some sweet potatoes fries. Sweet potato fries are are one of my favorite things. <sighs> The thing about the loaded sweet potato fries that are listed for the Golden Oak Outpost is that they're tossed in cinnamon sugar, which still is is cool, but it has marshmallow cream and butterscotch chips and toffee pieces. And so marshmallow, butterscotch, and toffee are not my favorites. So I don't know about that. That might be on the, I don't think it's going to be good, but we'll try it on my list. So I guess we would consider that a sweet treat. But you said when we looked at it the first time, ah, that's just a pop tart. But it looks really good. Oh, and some of these are available during regular park hours as well. That that tombstone tart is available during regular park hours. Mm-hmm. That that might be a purchase. Now, I will say something that I for sure want to try is what's coming up next. The black velvet whoopie pie. Oh, it looks so good. Black velvet cr- cookie with buttercream and sprinkles topped with a sugar spider. And I know it's the spider that's really making you excited about this. It's just that whole thing looks really, really good. I got to say, the only thing I would be concerned about this one is it's probably a mess. The whoopie pie at the food and wine has always been delicious. But if you try to eat it with your hands, you would have about half of it on well, your Well, it's hands. the same as the Wookiee cookie, which we love. The we, we love a good Wookiee cookie, but it, again, can be really sticky and messy. <laughs> The, the, the Wookiee cookie. I, I take Wookie the Wookiee cookie. cookie over all of these. <laughs> I, oh, the I don't know. I do love better. a good Wookiee cookie, like I said, but I don't know. Because this Mickey, not the Mickey shaped cinnamon roll, which I know you would like because you like cinnamon rolls. And it has orange frosting and sprinkles. And I like orange flavored with the sweet to me. I hate orange oh, in really? my rolls. I, I do love not like orange. an orange cinnamon roll. Give me a little orange I like cinnamon. Zest. I like that. I had this honey cinnamon roll in a cafe and when I was traveling that was just spectacular. <laughs> but yeah, orange orange should be in a drink or a candy or something. I don't well now Mickey next... Space pumpkin cheesecake? Ah uh, yeah. Mini shaped pumpkin cheesecake. Yeah. It's so cute. I mean it's only but... gonna be September when we're there. So this the pumpkin thing will not be quite I won't be quite up for pumpkin exactly. No, I was just going to say I won't have had too much pumpkin by that point. So that's what's <laughs> I'll take all the pumpkin <clears throat> stuff. I love a good only time I drink coffee. The only time I ever drink coffee is pumpkin spice lattes. But yeah, the the mini shaped pumpkin cheesecake looks really good. Pecos Bill okay, so. Tall Tail Inn and Cafe, which is not my favorite. I'm not going to lie. I'm looking forward to tea on this. So I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Don't love uh, a Pecos Bill meal. I'm I with you. <laughs> don't. But this would be my second place I would go for dinner. And I, I would think the Cajun burger, which is a Cajun spice all beef patty topped with fried green tomato. Which I love. Cajun andouille dip. dip and Creole remoulade, remoulade served on a black bun might be in your area. I, I might have to try some of that, I will say. The bowl of bones, the bone Looks in piggy wings fried awesome. with fresh jalapenos tossed in a Coca-Cola cherry barbecue sauce. The only thing about that entire sentence that sounds good to me is Coca-Cola cherry barbecue sauce. Now that sounds interesting. Well, I think what we could do here is I could give you the the bones. You could lick off the cherry barbecue sauce, <laughs> and then I'll eat the little <laughs> big wings. <clears throat> I really don't like the call. I don't like it when they call them piggy wings. I know why they do it. They, they're little bones with meat on them, but very strange. It is very strange. But now I will say I I am torn on the next one because candy corn milkshake. I love candy corn. I am one of those people where I know there's people listening going. Oh, Gross. I do love candy corn. I, I I don't eat a lot of it anymore, but I do like to have a few pieces of it during Halloween because I do love it so much. 
And um, this is a sweet corn soft serve topped yeah. with whipped cream and sweet potato cornbread nuggets. It just sounds like almost this, too sweet. Does it not sound like <laughs> it sounds like it's almost going to be too sweet? I think I, the description sounds disgusting because it doesn't say sweet candy corn soft. It says sweet corn soft serve. And sweet potato cornbread nuggets does not say milkshake to me. I know. I don't but know. The it picture just... looks good. Yeah, it looks really pretty. And candy <laughs> corn has a little bit of white chocolate taste to it. M&M's made some candy corn M&M's for a while, and they were fantastic because basically they were just um, white chocolate M&M's with just a little hint of, of whatever flavor it is that's candy corn. All right, moving on to the next set of insane things they have available. <laughs> yes. There's an apple fritter sundae, which is an apple, two, a couple of little apple fritters topped with a choice of ice cream, whipped cream, and sprinkles. I do like apple fritters, so that might not be too bad. Uh, but there's also an ice cream cookie sandwich that doesn't look terrible. I'm going to say the ice cream in that apple fritter is what is interesting because it's not vanilla ice cream. It looks like it could be pumpkin spice ice cream. Mm. Or it could just be a big old scoop of pumpkin. Just right out of a pumpkin, that would be. And yeah, the ice cream sandwich. I, I'm always concerned when I see something. It's a cookie topped with sprinkles with a choice of ice cream. And it's, it's, it's a ch cookie with a bunch of white and orange chips in it and a vanilla looking ice cream in the middle. Usually when I get stuff like this, it's either too frozen or not frozen enough. Right. I hate having to eat my snacks like immediately. Right. At Dollywood, they had something like this and it ended up being a scoop of ice cream on two of these waffles. It's fantastic tasting, but it was by no means something I eat with your hands. Yeah, I see. Yeah, so char siu chicken wings, which are whole chicken wings glazed in char siu and topped with chili threads right. and garlic. It yeah. looks like that basically it's a Cantonese sauce and um, it's it has hoisin honey soy sauce sherry and a chinese five spice powder so it's a special it's a special barbecue sauce sounds interesting i don't think i want to get this from sleepy hollow and have to walk around with my finger sticky the rest of the night from <laughs> it is interesting to me that there does seem to be a lot of like when it had the uh the different types of meat like on the bone type meats, it seems like there's several options of that, which again, it's, it's not that they're not usually very good. It's just, they are very messy to eat when you're walking around because I will say for not so scary, it's really hard to find a table almost anywhere during not so scary. So it's hard to find a place to sit and eat. It's sort of like food and wine where it's, you know, you're usually eating as you're moving, but I will say for sleepy hollow, the headless horseman cupcake, spicy cheese flavored cupcake with lime filling topped with cream, cheese, buttercream, spicy cheese flavored snacks and a chocolate piece. Sounds really interesting to me. I'm, I'm, I too am. <laughs> In, interested by the spicy cheese snacks on a cheese cupcake. I know. Well, that's just, I think it's the mix of the savory and the sweet that's making it very, very interesting to me. So I, that's, that might be on my list. Cause that, Oh my gosh, that sounds really good. I've never had a cheese flavored cupcake. I know. I've never considered buying a cheese flavored cake. <laughs> I've never cheese seen cake, one before. Yes, too but buy, not, so. what? And All then right, there so is the your, one, right? Funnel cake, cinnamon I funnel cake. Think I might consider being my favorite in overall. It's kind of boring looking, but it's a cinnamon funnel cake. Yeah. It's a funnel cake topped with pumpkin ice cream, drizzled with pumpkin spiced caramel, and topped with butterscotch chips. I don't know. I did they yeah. buy extra butter ch scotch chips and need to find what to do with them? It seems like those are on a lot of things. And I only noticed because I don't like butter scotch. But, um, but yeah, it's, I'm not a funnel cake person either. So. so as we look at this, it looks very, it looks kind of simple and plain, but reading it, it sounds like the last flavored funnel cake I got, which made me almost sick from eating 
because it was so sweet. Because yeah. topped with cinnamon, drizzle, ice cream, butterscotch chips. Interesting. Yeah. Well, Story okay, Book so... Treats has a Hades cone, which I will have to say, I find Storybook Treats a really fun place to go because I do love a good Peter Pan float. Um, but the Hades cone is Dole Whip Mango and Habanero soft served topped with blue raspberry shell and a little chili lime seasoning which sounds interesting that one is sadly only available during the party as well because right. that would actually be something i would definitely get yeah no offense to people who believe dole whip should only be served one way in one place on the earth they got the place right the um that looks really interesting i've never had spicy ice cream as well I know that habanero that, is not a not a light spice. I mean, you mm -hmm. can get some pretty heat, pretty much heat. Yeah. Again, I'm very fascinated by all the options of the savory with the sweet here this year. So that that is fascinating to me. But at the Sunshine Tree Terrace, which where is where we usually do get our Dole Whip if we're going to do a Dole Whip, um, there is a tropical graveyard which is mango mousse. In sour tropical gelatin topped with cookie crumbles, gummy worms, sprinkles, and a tombstone chocolate piece. It looks like your basic, what was it called? Dirt cake? Dirt cake. Yeah. What you do for kids with the <clears throat> crushed up Oreos and the, yeah. But it does have with the mango mousse and the sour tropical gelatin. It does. I think it's an adult version of dirt cake. And by adult, we mean because it's spicy. Oh, not, it's <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, and then finally, the last two are the churro cart near Cinderella Castle, not so poison apple churro, a churro rolled in green apple sugar topped with snicker bar pieces and drizzled with caramel sauce. It legitimately looks like celery in the picture. It does. I see it every time thinking, oh, celery? Wait a minute. They have, I mean, that would be a really interesting track, snack for them to have, like a celery cart. Celery cart and they give you toppings, but... It looks just like that. It's a green churro. And it has these little things on them. What are, what are the things? Nuts? It has snicker bar pieces. Snicker bar pieces. Of course, it's not nuts. That also looks like something you need to eat sitting down. Because those snicker pieces are going everywhere. Yeah. And if they're not going everywhere, that means they're glued down with something that's going to come with you either, either way. The Jack Pop. They have a Jack and a Sally Pop. Mm -hmm. Jack's Pop is a chocolate fudge brownie with marshmallows, with marshmallow filling and topped with a Jack chocolate piece. And Sally is a yellow pop with raspberry filling topped with a Sally ch chocolate piece. I really am looking forward to the Sally Pop. N not that I don't love a fudge brownie, although I'm not a big marshmallow fan, but I'm going to tell you yellow pop with raspberry filling. Anything raspberry, I am all about that. So that one looks really, really good. I was going to say, sadly, the pops are only available during the party. You are much more excited about the outdoor vending cart near the Haunted Mansion that's going to have the Skull Brownie. I would be more excited about this if it was available all the time because it's it's really cool looking. It looks like a skull. It's a, The Skull Brownie has Mexican spice chocolate brownie with dulce de leche filling and sugar eyes. Mm -hmm. And it looks pretty creepy. It does. And the filling sounds just perfect. But I, I don't think I can put that. I think the reason why we're doing this is we're picking our worst and our, our best. And we're going to get two is because neither of us needs that much sugar. No. And, and I think you can tell by hearing me talk about these that I am more of a savory person than I am a sweets. I, I, there are not just a lot of sweet things that I like. So I, like I mentioned before, I, we typically don't take time to try a lot of things at the party um, because we don't like to take a lot of time away from the party. There are so many cool things to do at the party. We don't typically waste a lot of time with food, but there were some interesting options this time. So we felt like we could just do something a little different this year and maybe just try a couple of things. So what was your least, the least interesting thing to you? I okay. mean, I would say my least would be the cherry. The um, cherry, what's it called? Queen of Hearts slushy. The Queen of Hearts slushy. That would probably be my least. And then my best, 
is so much harder to choose than my worst. I know. That's why I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about what my least favorite. Let me think about. I honestly think if, if I was looking at what I least wanted, it would be the funnel cake. Okay. So it's, so we're either going to get the cherry slushy or the funnel cake, which works out well. Cause those are probably on our good list. The I started to say list. the good list, the, the funnel cake would be on your good list and the cherry slushy would be on my good list. It wouldn't be the top mind you, but so what's your top? Oh my goodness. It's either the whoopie pie or the headless horseman cupcake. There's a part of me leaning towards the Dole Whip, Mango, and Habanero. Though I'm afraid our friends might disown us while we're there. I was really hoping you were going for the Whoopie Pie. (laughs) 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 That's what I was hoping you were going to say. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stick with the dole. The um. Yeah, the dole whip. You're gonna do that. I mean, you throw in habanero, and that just. I know. That just says it right there. I know. Okay, so it's habanero, or what was yours? Headless Horseman cupcake. Okay, you are heads. I'm tails. Okay. Who was tails? You. Okay. So, we'll so we're that. going with and the Hades then, cone. So Hades cone is is one of Hades them. cone, and we'll choose your. What was your? What was the one? What were the My two negatives? My least favorite was the funnel cake. Well, that seems unfair, doesn't it? What was your least? Oh, your least favorite let's was get the fa- let's get no. The remember, cake. your least favorite was my one of my favorites too. Your least favorite was the um, Queen of Hearts slushy. Okay, so we'll get the so heads or tails, Queen of Hearts slushy or no, no, that's I got mine. You you get the opposite one. So we'll get the Queen of Hearts slushy and and it honestly, if I'm I'm thinking about nutritionally, these are probably the two best snacks, anyways. Well, and of course, if we have time and we're the where are the people that aren't writing things, we'll probably get some more things. But we'll we'll pledge to try those two things. Okay, sounds like a plan. All right, so that's our best of snacks. We'll report back on that at the party or after the party somehow. We'll make that happen. So there we go. Coming up next week, we have a couple of segments planned. The first will be our figment feeling. I'm thinking it's going to be eating at the Magic Kingdom because that was a definite opinion we have feelings on. So we'll talk about that. Yeah. We're going to do, it was the best of food and wine. It was the worst of food and wine. We're going to do this. We may break that up. We don't have too many weeks before we're going. We may break that up depending on how we want to do it. We're going to try to find their foods that we've never eaten before and make sure we try them. Cause I mean, I know I can't talk her out of getting the steak and the and the cheddar cheese soup from the Canadian I, place, you, unless they don't have it. Too. Uh, and <laughs> as long as it's there and we're not going to La Cellier to eat, then I'm going to somehow get the steak and the cheese soup from the booth. It's just going to happen. <laughs> and next, I'm going to generate the number. Look on page 152. What is our next topic? Ooh. Page 152 is Disney's Hollywood Studios. Okay. She didn't make it in Hollywood. Verified proof. (laughs) It's not, it's not based on what she would like it to be. Exactly. I mean, she loves (laughs) Hollywood Studios, but. I do. And I made the joke about it being the great movie ride, but this is, this is, this is the, the, the chapter is starting Disney's Hollywood Studios. So we will do some trivia from Disney's Hollywood Studios. All right. Well, Hashtag so always MGM. Hashtag it's no longer MGM. Get over it. There's nothing MGM there. There wasn't anything. There MGM. is one thing, and that's going to be the first part of my trivia for next week. There is one thing MGM still there, there and I will tell thing. you what it is. All right. So we will talk to you next week.